If you want an easy way to keep everyone healthier in a world full of viruses, this episode is for you. 2020 was unique in a lot of ways with how COVID was handled, but it wasn't unique as far as germs passing around, family events and holidays being compromised by illness, and even the bottom lines of businesses affected by colds and flus. But 2023 saw the public rise of artificial intelligence, and in 2024, you'll see new applications of AI. Among these, we now have the ability to screen quickly and privately on our phones for COVID and flu just using our voice. In fact, use the link in the description to register for this service and you'll receive a limited number of screenings absolutely free. As in, 10 minutes from now, you could have the all clear on certain respiratory viruses. This gives you a tool for making the decisions that are right for you around keeping yourself and others safe and keeping your business operational. So stay tuned and we'll cover how this is done and also what you can do to promote better health in the face of a viral world. This is the Heart Body Business Podcast. Inspiration, tips, and tools for entrepreneurs seeking a more fulfilling type of success. One that stems from exploring and expressing their true passion and purpose and finding healthy ways to do so. All coupled with insights and action items to get a business moving in the right direction. I'm Steve, your host, and I invite you to learn more at heartbodybusiness.com. Because of everything that happened in 2020, the topic of viruses and COVID became highly political. But if we can ignore politics for now, I think it's fair to say that it's never been ideal to knowingly expose other people to a virus. I mean, unless they're trying to catch it like they sometimes did back in the day to get childhood diseases out of the way. But generally, if you know you have a cold or a flu, no one really wants you around because they know there's a chance they could catch it. Now, this doesn't get us into certain hot topics like the exact nature of viruses and contagion. I think there are fascinating possibilities here. And let's be clear that no matter the role of viruses and disease, what we call the terrain, or basically the body's state of health prior to exposure, helps to determine if we catch something and how it plays out. Which is why we'll talk today about what you can do to maintain better health in a viral world. But to keep the conversation simple for now, something is clearly contagious in people with certain diseases, which we know is colds, flus, and obviously many other conditions. And here's what's remarkable. Thanks to AI being able to dig in to find patterns that are incredibly difficult for humans to find, they've been able to find biomarkers in people's voices indicating when they have certain viral diseases. Specifically, this was developed for COVID and flu, but it opens up extraordinary possibilities that are already being explored to screen for all sorts of conditions with just your voice, even those not caused by viruses. In short, if you gather enough people who have been medically diagnosed with something and you record all their voices, you can then use AI to see if there are certain voice patterns shared among them that are not shared by people who don't have that condition. If you can find these patterns, then you can use AI to analyze anyone's voice and essentially screen them for that condition. At that point, someone can take action on their health, whether that means ramping up natural health solutions or going to see their doctor for next steps. In the case of COVID and flu, this technology was developed by a doctor out of Carnegie Mellon and validated by research at Yale and MIT. And it's been found to be 99% accurate when indicating that someone is clear of the viruses it's checking for. To me, this is way more reliable than home tests, and it's way faster, more convenient, and more private 
than swab tests. So to me, this takes the politics out of it. No one's tracking your results, sending your DNA off to a lab, or forcing you to use a pass. But it gives you the power of knowledge so you can make more informed decisions for yourself about when you might want to seclude from others or have them test to know when they should do so. And here's the kicker. It appears so far that it may be able to pick up on contagion sooner than a swab test would. And when you're no longer contagious, but maybe still have some symptoms of clearing out, it may give you the all clear, which means you're able to avoid others when it means the most to do so, and you can get back to life and work as soon as possible. I'll give you a personal example to show you how effective this looks to me. My wife and I recently traveled by plane, and upon returning, she screened positive for a respiratory virus using this technology. Her symptoms were so subtle at the point of screening, she hadn't even paid attention to them, but they came on pretty quickly after that. She kept screening positive over the next several days while dealing with symptoms. Meanwhile, I initially scanned all clear after the trip, but two days later, I got a positive result and my symptoms hit pretty hard that evening. I work from home so I didn't have to skip work or anything, but if I worked in an office setting, it would have been the perfect time to work from home for a couple of days if my work allowed me to. And in fact, in a day when remote work is so common, if it were my business, I would encourage people to screen on a daily basis, at least in the winter months, and to work from home anytime they screened positive. It would help to keep all my employees healthier and more productive, would probably allow more rest and a faster recovery for those staying at home, even if they were working, and wouldn't involve anything invasive like unreliable PCR tests or forced vaccines. In my case, my wife and I both got the all clear a few days later, even as our noses were still running. In other words, Things were clearing up, but we believe we were no longer contagious, which is normal at the end of a cold or flu. And that's exactly what the technology was showing us. As I mentioned before, you can check out the link in the description if you'd like to register to access this technology through a phone app available in both the app and Google Play stores. Registering will give you access to a number of screenings for free. Now, as I said, to me, this is a tool to empower you. Friends and family can screen if they want to minimize contagion at gatherings and events. Businesses can use this to keep a healthier workforce. But it's not just about whether to attend work or events. It's also a great flagging system for ramping up your health efforts. Because if you screen positive before symptoms show up, you can get an earlier jump on taking extra supplements, getting some extra rest, using essential oils, taking a hot sauna, or whatever else you may do to help fend off a virus. In fact, I just finished reading the book Virus Blitz by my good friend, Dr. Keith Scott Mumby, one of the sharpest holistic doctors I know. While the book does talk about viruses and their associated diseases, the bulk of the book goes into what you can do to stay healthy by supporting a healthy terrain, or essentially maintaining a strong body and immune system. He includes a number of supplement options, including vitamins C and D, zinc, and nebulized hydrogen peroxide, just to name a few. While I knew most of his recommendations and use many of them, I learned of at least one new one and just learned more about those I knew. But importantly, the book went well beyond recommending supplements, reminding us about the value of things like walks in nature or meditation to reduce stress, thinking about electrosensitivity, brain entrainment, and intranasal light therapy. I'll include a link to his book in the description if you want to check it out for more details. And of course, there are plenty of good websites that give you valuable guidance on common sense natural steps to better health. Just choose your sources carefully, as there's plenty of misinformation, even by well-meaning people, and definitely by those with financial interests. Another tip is to keep your nasal passages clear, not only with light therapy, but with a neti pot. Normally, this is done with a little salt and purified water. There's also something called alkalol, 
which is a liquid you can mix with some water. This is a mixture of menthol, some essential oils, and more. Either way, you simply run the liquid into one nostril and out the other into your sink. Some cultures do this daily as part of their hygiene routine. On a final note, you don't take all these healthy steps only to defeat them with an otherwise terrible lifestyle. Drinking, smoking, eating badly, never moving, not getting enough sleep, and so on. These are all just ways of asking to be sick because collectively they clog our metabolic pathways, slow production of ATP, cause inflammation, and so on. Consider once a month one step you can take to eliminate something unhealthy from your life, ideally a step that pushes you a little, but is something you can succeed at, and see if you can replace it with one healthy option. Small changes over time can absolutely change your life. Put these lifestyle actions into place, including some of the specifics I've mentioned above, and you have a much better chance of staying healthy in the face of viruses. And even so, know that technology is already here to screen you for certain viruses, which can help you to make better decisions about when to be around others. Combine these and encourage those around you to combine these, and I believe we can do a lot to lower the impacts of our viral world. I hope you find this useful, and if you have a favorite book or resource for staying healthy, feel free to mention it in the comments if you're listening on YouTube. The goal, as always, is for us to live holistic lives that bring together the best of our inner journeys, our relationships, and our health to make the most of our business lives. And I hope this episode empowers you to do more of just that. Till next time, thanks for listening. And if you enjoyed this episode, make sure to subscribe. You can also join our mailing list to get alerts on our latest episodes and other tips, tools, and news. Learn more and sign up at heartbodybusiness.com.